everyone, welcome to the masterclass portion of Polichek's Advanced Studies for the Clarinet. Today we'll be going through 18 number 2 after Hermann Behrens. To give you a very quick snapshot, Behrens was a German Romantic composer known mainly for his piano writing. In this etude, we are given the key of A minor in 9 8 time with a tempo indication of Allegro Moderato. Given this, I would suggest maybe a tempo of quarter equals 100 116, depending on your goals. While this etude may look relatively simple, I think there are actually a few aspects of this writing that create some obstacles for us as a clarinetist. Throughout this etude, we have many instances of large intervals that often go between the break. Due to this, the even finger motion will be a guiding factor in the overall ease of performance. Additionally, consider which pinky keys you will use throughout, ensuring that whichever options you do choose, they remain reliable at any tempo you ultimately perform at. Beginning this study, I would suggest leaning into the romantic style and using a bit of rubato from the first two eighth notes in measure one. After this far, establish your chosen tempo and then continue with a steady pulse. Other instances of this gesture could also occur in measures 5, 17, 21, and 33. As a whole, this study is based on ascending and descending sequences, often outlined by major and minor triads. When practicing, take some time to understand where the key notes are within each larger grouping. I would also suggest before you start, Focusing some time on warm-ups that will allow you to play this with greater ease. If you are not already doing so, incorporate full range scales and arpeggios into your daily warm-ups that provide you with greater fluency as you approach the music and all the pieces that you are working on in your folder. In measure 3, we have an A minor triad that is embellished by leading tones B to C, D sharp to E, and G sharp to A. When practicing, try placing greater emphasis on these notes so that you are able to hear the triad from which the gestures are based on. For every instance throughout this etude, I would also suggest getting louder through the moving notes since they are leading into the larger intervals at the end of each grouping. As a good golden rule, music must always be coming or going from somewhere. Make sure to maintain direction in the line that you're playing so the listener can really feel like they're taking them somewhere new. In measure four, we have a great note that should be played before the beat given the romantic style. Keep the placement elegant and light, avoid snappy rigid movements. Looking ahead, the same suggestion can be applied to measures 20 and 36. In measure 21, I would recommend starting at a mezzo forte instead of a forte, that way you have enough room to pace the crescendo to measure 31. In this sequence, place a bit more emphasis on the first note of each slur grouping, that way the stepwise scalar motion is heard throughout the larger phrase. In measure 41, this arpeggiated sequence provides a gradual build in harmonic tension until the written E6 at measure 48. When practicing these groupings, avoid stopping the air between the large descending intervals and instead try using tier dynamics to create a consistent crescendo with each passing grouping. For example, I might start off the G minor arpeggio at a mezzo piano, adding a crescendo until the written G sharp 3 that occurs after the written B4. On the next grouping, start a little bit louder than the first, but make sure that you are maintaining the intensity even though you are going lower in the range of the clarinet. In short, you should be able to create a sort of a staircase effect in which you are consistently playing louder despite the shift in range. As an easier minor, I recommend writing numbers maybe one through six above each grouping. That way you can visually see the increase in volume that needs to happen or the chords of the larger phrase. In measure 48, the written G sharp five shell should be played at full value, building into the succeeding grace notes that begin the final passage of this A2. Now for this trill, start at a forte marking, that way you are allowing the air to do the work. You really want to hear both notes happening in this trill. Because G sharp to A is a little bit more challenging to play due to the fact that we are using two weak fingers on the left hand, I sometimes like to tell my students to pretend that there is maybe Velcro or glue between the two fingers, keeping them together, keeping the unified motion happening throughout. Uh, we really want to make sure that both fingers are acting in the same way if there's a lag between the forefinger or the pinky, we can encounter some problems. Alternatively, you can also use just the forefinger to play this trill, but I find that it's maybe a little bit slower depending on how fast you can get it, and it's not as loud. So it's up to you, but in any case, just make sure that this trill does not impede the ability to get into the final phrase. We just want it to be a little embellishment going into that passage. For the written A6, three measures before the end, this note should be a peak of the phrase making sure that the surrounding intervals are played without rushing. Now, practicing this moment, consider breaking up the preceding sequence so that the final octave between the A5 and the A6 is a bit easier to play. For fingering options, using the normal A6 fingering is completely doable, although I think it may be a little bit more resistant than using the alternative fingering, which replaces the E-flat A-flat key 
with the F sharp C sharp key. So we're going to be using this F sharp C sharp key instead of the A flat E flat. Um, since we're descending, I found that it's easier to cross this register break by using the alternate fingering, as I just mentioned. If you are experiencing difficulties with this, try isolating the octave or practice going between an E6 and an A6 to really understand the voicing that needs to happen. Um, practice octaves, fifths, fourths, um, work your way up in those intervals. Just really try and get the flexibility needed to get through this interval at the tempo of desired chord performance. And with that, we reached the end of 18 number two in Victor Politics Advanced Studies for the clarinet. Having reached the end of this masterclass, I hope that you've gained a bit of knowledge and that it prepares you for a lovely performance in the future. In case you have any additional questions on this ATU, feel free to leave a comment below or email me. I'll get back to you very soon. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for ATU number three. Happy practicing and don't forget to hit subscribe on the way out. See ya.